So I'll call this meeting to order. 405, I'm sorry. I apologize. Councilor Dwight and I were arguing. Uh, consistent with our practice, even though there's really no public to be, uh, be aware of, we're going to introduce the members, the commissioners. Uh, I'll start. Um, Councilor Owen Freeman Daniels, the chair. Since the vice chair is absent. Ned Huntley, Director of Public Works. Kevin Bruce, Planning Board. Dave Pomeranz, Director of Central Services. Gary Herbo, Board of Public Works. Bill Hargraves, Board of Health. Alan Goulbick, Assistant Engineer. Lee Pipe, Planning Director. Uh, Russell Goods, of Police Chief. Richard Burke, Citizen. Thank you. Uh, this meeting will be, is it video recorded? Yes. Video and audio recorded and uh, hand recorded. So, again, no jokes. Uh, approval of minutes, October 17th and, uh, I'm sorry, October 15th and September 17th. <coughs> so, take one's group. Absolutely. Second? Second. Second. Commissioner Cooper. All those in favor? Any comments? Aye. Comments? No? Okay. All those in favor say aye. Uh, uh, now have a section of public comment for any item not on the agenda. No public comment. Um, uh, she's from the park. She's from the uh, I, I see. Um, the commissioner is mind to take um, first night free parking out of order just because I know Holly. I see Holly's here. Let's so just get the report from her first. Um, so in your, included in your packet is a recommendation from the parking committee. We put it to them and they brought it back. Um, that uh, the, park, the Transportation Parking Commission orders all fees for on street parking meter and on the off street municipal parking lot, not included in the EJ Gear parking garage, to be suspended from 10 a.m. onwards, New Year's Eve 2013, celebration of the first night. At 10 a.m., I, I just put that in uh, from uh, conversation. Uh, we have a representative from the parking committee here to give us the, some of the account. Do you, need to Do you need me to say? Please, if you don't mind. Hello, uh, Holly Mott. I'm the chair of the parking committee. Um, we were asked to review by this commission uh, the proposal or the, the question of free parking downtown on uh, first night in the week. Um, we discussed, uh, members of the committee at our last meeting on November 6th, discussed the pros and cons of uh, this proposal. And um, we decided that the nature of first night is uh, unique when compared to some other downtown events where free parking has been uh, considered in the past. Um, unlike things like Bag Day or uh, Christmas Eve, first night is really the kind of event that encourages people to come into town and stay with a growing number of people over the course of the day. Um, and unlike shopping-related holidays, um, this is a day when there's really no alternative. So a shortage of parking, uh, back up, recognizing that demand will be impacted by people who potentially could be parked in one spot for several hours, uh, unlike a normal day when they're paying for that time. Others coming into town and not finding parking on Main Street due to that are probably not going to not go to first night because of this, that they will find places to park in and around uh, downtown, perhaps even parking further uh, outside of the downtown area than normally, uh, because first night is a destination and there is no alternative at the mall. Um, we had considered uh, noon as a start time for that free. I know that Owen uh, is proposing 10. Um, we weren't hard and fast to the noon thing. We tied it with this commencement of the first event, the first night starts at noon. 
Um, but we also recognize that this could complicate some, uh, uh, for some, if there was paying for parking part of the day and not all of the day. So we're, we defer to um, for judgment on that one. Um, but ultimately, we felt that this was a good opportunity for the city to extend a uh, gift, if you will, to uh, community members and visitors um, to allow them to park for free, let them come into town to stay for as long as they like without having to worry about being ticketed during the celebration. Um, and it's our hunch, of course, we have no data on this, that some will come and stay all day and others will, as usual, come for one or two things and then they'll be on their way. So uh, demand will likely be impacted, but it's not a uh, given that all of Main Street will be parked up without any turnover uh, from noon until midnight. Thank you. Any questions, Chair? Uh, what time does first night start, first events? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a noon or 11? I believe it's noon. Uh, there may have been something at 11.45, but... Um, I think they form at 11, right? But they march now. Uh, I thought the wording was a little awkward, where it says 10 a.m. by which we have 10 a.m. to, to 12 midnight. Oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I just oh, okay. I put that into the conversation. We don't even have to do 10. It could be noon or whatever. Uh -huh. You just want to just amend to 10 a.m. or whatever to 12 midnight. Yeah. Of course, after midnight, I'll be doing any marketing. Well, they start with the first one, what, 6 or 8? 6. Six. 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 So after that, wouldn't be an issue anymore. Except for the lots. The garage. <coughs> the garage is not included. The garage is not included. Oh, right. I thought the original one was uh, the garage. But no, not included. I'm sorry. Not, not included. Uh, so 10, 10 to midnight? I think, John, I mean, if you put 6, I think the people coming out of the area would be confused. Wondering if they can have to start paying at six. Oh, okay. Can someone refresh my memory? Have we done this in the past? I, not, not when I was around. <laughs> we have. I don't think we've done it every year. Okay. Um, I can't I'm not. I'm not. I remember. I remember doing it once. But. I know this is meant. There's always a confusion when Bill was here because some things would come before us and some things didn't. So even when we were on meeting, it doesn't mean we weren't waving at this man. We were doing it if I were. Um, any other questions for the chair? For the chair. Okay. Um, thank you. If you just stay there for a minute, sure. just, just in case there's discussion. Um, so, can I entertain a, I entertain a motion? I entertain a motion. So, I entertain a motion. Okay. I'll try to five and second it by Commissioner Bruce. Um, so, we're going from the 10 a.m. to 12 midnight. Do you want to make it a little after 12, like 1? So, people can just stop to the wall. But after 12, it's free anyway because it's a holiday. Right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Right, oh, right, after 12, it's, it's a holiday. <coughs> That's right. I just want to make it clear and say for the entirety of the 31st of December. So that would be, so, so there's no confusion. That'd be from 8 to 10, and then it would also be. What are the meters like? 8 to 10. 10 times 1. 10. Okay. Any other discussion about this? We're ready for a vote. Uh, all those in favor of this order, say aye. 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 As opposed? As Can I ask a follow-up question? Nope, your time's done. <laughs> <laughs> does that go to the newspaper as a matter of course, and who does that come from? Oh, I'll, um, I'll, I'll tell the newspaper okay. so that they can put a banner around it or something. Um, actually, since you're here, do you mind also giving us a report from the parking committee? Because I sure. heard some rumors about that. Yeah. <laughs> um, our committee is uh, in uh, a bit of transition, and we are actually uh, officially or technically on uh, hiatus until we bring in new members. Uh, we started with seven, 
members of uh, the committee. That was six members of the public and uh, and Director Biden. Um, we have lost uh, three of those members of the public since we started back in February. Uh, with our last resignation was just on Friday. So we are now at less than four of um, members of the public on the committee, which in the uh, bylaws of the, of the committee, we need at, at least four members of the public. So we are doing some regrouping. We have to um, wait until there is at least one more member of the public on the committee uh, before we can operate as a committee. Our next meeting is scheduled for December uh, 4th, I believe. Um, which comes before your next meeting, where if there are any applicants, you would be reviewing and voting on new members. So realistically, um, we will not be meeting before January. That scheduled meeting is actually January 1st. Um, so we will see, uh, maybe it's February, um, uh, but it, it's a disappointment because we have, in a lot of ways, um, really just started to feel some traction in the last few months. Um, we've been busy reviewing the reform package, educating ourselves on best practices as related to the package. Um, we have uh, spoken with members of our community as well as uh, representatives and members of other communities that we've identified as similar to ours uh, where parking is concerned. Um, we have been looking, uh, gathering feedback really uh, to our reform package um, as well as to uh, similar measures that have been implemented in, in other similar towns um, and cities. Uh, we have heard uh, varying opinions on issues like extending the hours that parking would be enforced as uh, would be predicted. Um, and we recognize as a committee that before making any recommendations on the reform package, uh, these issues deserve more information uh, before we're comfortable making recommendations on uh, any of those items, like uh, increasing the rate of parking, extending the number of hours uh, at certain meters in certain areas in town, extending the hours that, uh, that people would be required to pay. Um, a member of our committee is uh, quite knowledgeable in this area, although parking specifically is not his, um, his, his area, but transportation is. Um, and he has, uh, he has devised a data implementation, sorry, a data collection plan, uh, which has been um, implemented uh, in the planning department where interns are starting to gather some data on uh, parking activity in and around uh, downtown. Um, and we have also uh, had several members of the public, including some local business owners, um, uh, members of the bid, uh, members of, of uh, dispatch, and uh, the, the uh, parking um, enforcement division come to our meetings, both solicited and unsolicited, uh, to share their thoughts on parking, uh, specifically the reform package and things that they've heard uh, about think, uh, changes that may be coming. Um, and uh, we, as I said, there's no area at, outside of um, New Year's Eve first night parking that we felt confident making recommendations to this commission as of yet, uh, but we are uh, we're hearing, we're recognizing patterns and, and starting to uh, really um, uh, coalesce as a group. And uh, as I said, we are now being forced to be on hold. Uh, but we hope to be up and running again as soon as we can. Um, Thank you. Any questions? Any, yeah, any questions for the, for, uh, for the chairperson of the now, the now the Committee of the Canada Forum? <laughs> Uh, so yeah, the, or the the law the law of the city says that we have, can't have fewer than four members of the public. So, do you know anybody? <laughs> uh, 
we can put other members of the commission on, but we still need to, to satisfy that minimum of four. In particular, we started with two business owners, business people, and I think that's important if it's not being represented. Right. That's right. We business someone from the business community is still very important to add. <coughs> Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, we'll see what we can do to try to get you uh, more members. Great. Um, reports from other committees. Uh, we have public transit coming up in a second. Uh, anything from bike pay? Uh, well, we met this morning. Um, main discussion was actually about the uh, old South Street or uh, New South Street piece. You all had a presentation from Nelson Nygaard at the last meeting, so we discussed it briefly. Um, they really like the idea of sort of this. We had a meeting before we talked a little bit about what can we do now versus what do we need to to put on the tip for future funding. And they supported you know, keeping the existing crosswalk where the fatality was, the one by the park, um, ideally making a raised crosswalk, doing curb extensions of some kind, solid curb extensions there. So all focused on, on making that safer. Um, and then north of that, following Nelson Nygaard recommendation, for DBO to do the line painting so there's a northbound lane and a leftbound, they you know, like a westbound lane. Um, I figured those could be the the low hanging fruit would be with existing state hospital mitigation money. And then probably everything else has to be rolled into the larger, you know, construction. Probably goes on the tip for better on the state fund. Oh, James is in here. Uh, um, thank you. Uh, any questions for about that committee? Uh, enforcement committees done. Public transit committee discussion. Put this on the agenda because of a, of a conversation that we're that was having uh, through, the, through the internet um, about um, whether this committee had enough members to continue, and what it's whether you know what the story was. Do you mind talking a bit about that for a yeah, second? Um, yeah, so identical to um, parking, if the committee's down to two members, um, so they don't have enough members to possibly have a quorum. They had an informal discussion four weeks ago where the last meeting was, but it wasn't a quorum, we didn't do meetings. So they really can't meet again until you all appoint new members. The committee, it's interesting, there's sort of two roles the committee could have, and they've gone in one direction. So the committee does a lot of work. The reason you almost never get reports from them is their work is very much been in the weeds of things that don't need to come before you. The biggest thing is PBTA has been switching most of their routes from flag routes, so you wave them down, to specific stops, so it would be a stop and often a bus shelter. So they really go through the sounding board for PBTA. They meet with community members, they give recommendations. They're not formally making recommendations on behalf of the city, which is why it doesn't go before you. It's just a forum for those discussions to go on. So that's an important role whenever they get reconstituted. Because they've been so involved with that, they haven't been doing a lot of the 10,000 foot up level looking down at public transportation generally. Um, I think we have some interest in doing that. I think they're particularly interested in what's the next stage of Amtrak coming back, are there improvements we need to the trans system to feed people better into to Amtrak, you know. So um, we would take members for that committee as well here in the nominations and just basically put them on the committee. Uh, is there a demographic or a type or a, you know, someone that the committee needs? Well, or? Leslie Stein, who was at both here in that committee, was sort of representing the user community, people who ride buses a lot. Um, and so I think that's an important niche, particularly, frankly, the non-UMass bus. The, the UMass bus attracts people who have options. You know, you drive to UMass, even if you're in the car, you might take the bus because it's, it's good service. The other buses, basically, the, the research is all, the only people who really ride the other buses in the community are people who don't have other options because they're slow and cumbersome. And so someone representing that community. Beyond that, it's ever interesting. And one more, two more people? I mean, obviously, the more the merrier, but what's what, what kind of? I don't remember if they were set up or something. Okay. Before. But what, I mean, you, I know that you're partially on, you're on the committee. Well, I'm staffing them now, but staffing. no, I'm not really on them. 
and I'm sort of really covering a gap because I, I'm now the alternative mayor's alternative for PBTA's advisory board. Oh, okay. Um, so I covered that part of Leslie's charge. Okay, so business related people for the parking committee and bus users for public transit. This is a call to everybody. And other people for public transit, just at least one of them should be a bus. Right. Uh, any questions for public transit? Any discussion? Else? Anyone else? Anyone else? We're going to run along then. Um, oh, okay. Just, yeah. just, you know, I have to leave at 445, so if it's ever talking, don't take a person and walk out and move your We all might be thinking about 445 on this agenda here. Um, do you mind, I see some members of the public, do you mind if we reopen public comment? Does anyone mind? Is there an agenda item here for? I don't think so. Uh, no, but we've been in contact with Owen about coming to this meeting. Oh, okay. So, uh, do you mind if I, it's probably my fault. <laughs> we wanted to uh, talk yeah. first. Uh, Lola Reed, uh, William Street. And Mac Eckert, Valley Street. And um, sort of representing the Montview Traffic Calming Committee. Yeah, and we wanted to get back to the committee uh, and, and thank the committee for having undertaken this experiment to eliminate uh, the parking spot down at the uh, Holyoke Pleasant Street intersection that we've been to the committee before to talk about. Um, from our point of view, I think we, you know, we feel it hasn't completely solved the problem, but it's certainly uh, helped to improve the, visit, the pedestrian and the, uh, the driver visibility for people that are using that intersection. And our, um, our hope that, that is that uh, we can convince you to consider uh, I think at one point that the committee talked about um, how the Trailside Realty folks had donated those large bike, uh, brightly colored, bright one, yeah. one yeah. bike stand. Mm -hmm. And we talked about the possibility of uh, installing that down there uh, and uh, for several reasons. One, to um, obviously make a statement about encouraging the use of bicycles in that part of town. Um, and also to, uh, to continue to keep that, that additional visibility that you get by not having a car park there. And the, the other thing is that, as mentioned by, I think it was Jim Nash who mentioned this, um, when people turn, are turning left going south, they're turning uh, onto uh, Holyoke Street. Um, he has seen cars move around uh, to the right of the, where the parking space used to be. And if we had a um, if we had a bicycle rack there, they would not be able to do that because the you know the problem of course then is that they can't see if there is somebody in the crosswalk if there's a car right in front of them trying to turn left. And I think also you know in the, looking down the road in the news we've seen a proposal for Northampton Lumber for putting in uh, a, a fairly substantial housing. Uh, uh, project in there with as many as 60 units, um, which would obviously mean a new influx of both pedestrian and car traffic there. So, and I think there's going to be a conversation eventually uh, with Ward 3 committee about Lower Pleasant Street and how that's all going to look. Um, but that certainly, you know, is, is another pressure that's going to come to bear on that intersection that I think needs to be. And somewhere considered. along the way, lights were mentioned, traffic traffic lights, uh, blinking lights, or do you, was that anything that uh, came to your more. attention? No. Okay. I'd, I'd be surprised. This we weren't involved. Though. Okay. So, um, so, there, so there are two things there. We, we want to know if um, the parking space is, at this point, um, going to be permanently um, removed. I know that Owen has gotten um, some uh, feedback from uh, people about how they feel it's working to have that parking space eliminated. Um, and um, and can, can we get that bike rack installed? Okay. Um, thank you. Thank you for coming. Um, because it's public comment, we're not going to we're not going to do much discussion. But, okay. but uh, uh, we will. Uh, how will we take this up in December? Is that acceptable to the commission? 
uh, I have gotten emails from probably a, a good number of people who want, who liked that space being not being there, um, not having that parking space. So that's a good thing. Um, so possibility of voting on both of those items at the next meeting? I'm not sure if we're going to vote. If we vote on, I mean, I guess we could make a recommendation to the council, right? I think, isn't that probably what we would do, as long as it's in there. We'd have to be changing the parking lot. As long as it's actually in the code, right? Create that. Um, but in terms of space, that makes sense. <coughs> in terms of the RAC, I mean, it's central services controls us. Maybe that maybe broader discussion of what's the best place for it to be. There's a number of issues related to with that RAC, so we'd have to get into a discussion about that. Okay. Well, off season, off season. Right. Biking in February. Well, it happens. Uh, yeah, if, if there's a potential dollar. If there's a potential donor to do something with trail sites, or are we talking using trail sites? Using using that one. Using that. that that's been suggested by a number of people that it's not being utilized very much down at Pulaski Park, Pulaski Park, um, to move it over to um, the Pleasant Street uh, spot. Well, I'll, I'll put that. Well, I'll put the discussion, and um, I'll also we'll, we'll look at the code. See if we can take that off for next year for December. And you, you don't have to come in December. We, we hear you loud and clear. Okay. okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, DPW updates. I just put two down about what I wanted to hear about. Uh, you know, sure. Well, first thing I want to start off is introducing Alex Public, who's our new transportation engineer. He took over Laura's position. I think this is his third week with us, so he's getting his feet over. It's really wet. <laughs> so he comes um, from UMass, has a bachelor's degree in civil engineering. He's an uh, engineer in training. So um, hopefully he'll be getting his PE license in four or five years and he'll have a long life at the DPW. Uh, so that, um, I received an email request from a citizen about uh, placing uh, pedestrian face sound boxes at the intersection of Cons and uh, Old South Street. Uh, that kind of grew into a bigger discussion with Patty Shaughnessy and the Council of Aging and through the Council of Disabilities of coming up with a candidate list of signalized intersections that they would like to put these audible devices on. So right now that's in their committee level as their discussion. So we don't have defined intersections yet, but we're looking to get a number of them together and put them out to bid as one project. And it's at Council of Aging right now, Council on Aging right now. It's actually in Council of Disabilities is where it oh, bumps to. Okay. okay. Um, second one, uh, Damon Road River Run uh, intersection sign. We just completed the road safety audit for there with NASCOT and their consulting engineer. We're waiting for the final report to come out before we make any decisions on the sign that was discussed, I think, in the last public comment period. They had a gentleman come in from River Run. So that's kind of on hold at the moment. Uh, the road safety audit is really pushing the 25% design for NASCOT for their first public hearing on it. And that way it will be in the tip, hopefully, in construction maybe five to seven years from now. That would be the goal of that. Other ongoing projects with DPW, we uh, finished our crack ceiling for the fall, and Kennedy Road received its final course of pavement this past week, and uh, they're doing some miscellaneous cleanup work, uh, driveway apron work, and it probably won't be line striped until next year because of the cold weather that we have in front of us. So those are the current transportation projects that we have at DPW. Any questions for me? So what, what is the progress on uh, making Prospect Woodland permanent? I believe it went through two council meetings. The yep. last council meeting, what we're trying to do at the moment is try to figure out how we're going to set it up for the winter because it's going to be a temporary setup until we come up with plans for construction next spring, how to narrow the floor of the intersection down, new curbing, things of that nature. So we're talking internal to the DPW, how we're going to do that. Obviously, we think the signs, the stop signs in Center Road are probably going to have to go. Either that or we pile out snow up all around them and maybe water it down so it ices up. And I'm just kidding about that part. <laughs> but, um, and we've also addressed um, part of the Nuttland Forest issue. I had a long talk with them the other day. and. We'll be placing signs that say not a through way at each driveway entrance on city property. 
So hopefully that will alleviate some of the issues that he's having or they're having with people avoiding the intersection and darting through their parking lot. Can, can I ask quickly, um, I know that uh, we were doing the, we had Coca-Cola sponsor a pretty far-reaching um, uh, traffic study mm -hmm. or, or a traffic count at least around, all around their facility with like, like a dozen mm -hmm. traffic counters from PDPC. Have you received any data? From I haven't seen any data, but I know the data has been collected at this right. point. Right. I haven't seen anything from the mayor. Okay, so can we get so that? I mean, I know that Coca-Cola paid for it, but um, it would really be valuable for us to have that data, mm -hmm. especially in relation to this to the Day Avenue traffic calling application we just got. And so exactly. And forth. Um, uh, that's that's probably the largest collection that we've had in a long time in that area. So I'll give Amir an email tomorrow on that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Is that um, another one saying, is that enforceable? No. 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 Yeah. Yeah. We're just trying to, that, I was trying to help him out. It was his suggestion that we put the signs there. I offered to pay for them. Anything else? Okay, um, EJ Gare parking garage upgrades updates. So this is not the repairs, but the a future the RFP that, that uh, uh, or the, the upgrades that eventually we're going to need for sure. Uh, do you mind just speaking about it? Sure. You can upgrade on the update. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, the repairs to the system were made were operational. Um, Things are running smoothly, so and we do have spare parts and spare cards, um, so the, the horror show is, is done. Um, that said, we're now moving forward, and uh, we're going to bid this uh, under uh, Chapter 30B, which is goods and services under state procurement. Um, we'll probably be doing some of the what's called horizontal construction, basically um, installing conduit in the concrete for. Uh, electrical lines. We'll be doing that internally when we get to that point in the process. Uh, right now what we're doing is we're meeting with various parking access control vendors uh, to look at uh, and get an idea of the state of the art technology that's out there. Uh, the mayor, myself, Susan Wright, and uh, Brian Vesesky from Parking Maintenance. We met last week, I'm sorry, a week and a half ago with uh, Westcor, which is the company that uh, provide the uh, pay to park machines in their lots and on Main Street. Uh, and they developed a specification. Uh, this is all preliminary looking at uh, a gate and paper ticket system with a uh, machine system similar to what you see in the garage now. There would be two machines on the first level, not one that's there now, and two on the third level on the bridge to Thorns. Um, the reason we're looking at West Core uh, is because of the ability to basically, of the reporting software that exists that we can use for the paid park stations, we can integrate some of those components together. However, under Chapter 30B with procurement, we're going to have to bid this as a non-proprietary spec. So over the next two weeks, we'll be meeting with probably two or three other vendors to develop packages for us. We will then develop a spec. That, uh, discusses and outlines all the components we're going to be looking for for the hardware that's going to be put in, and then we will bid. Uh, and the intent is to get this bid as soon as we can uh, and look at about a six-week turnaround for installation. Um, some of the features we're going to be looking at, I mentioned the reporting software, uh, both the parking office, uh, tax collectors, Central services, we can all pull data out of the software systems, vehicle counts, whatever we're looking for. Uh, we're looking for a company that's going to be uh, local, uh, can do a quick response for emergency repairs and problems with the system, uh, similar to what we do with our elevator contracts through central services. We need companies to respond within an hour and a half to two hours to problems. Uh, unfortunately, the system that's in there now is a Canadian company with a German manufacturer for all the Canadian components. Um, so we're moving ahead. Um, this is totally different than the RFP that's being discussed to look at the reform package that Holly was talking about and policies and program changes. This is specific 
completely a hardware-based project uh, to address the ongoing issues with the system in the garage. And I will keep the, the commission advised as we're moving forward. So, so the access will be similar for the usage. You take something at the beginning and then you we're probably looking, play right. on foot, probably. State of, state of the art right now, it's a paper ticket, not the card system that we currently have. Uh, you would then purchase, uh, pay for them at the machines, and then deposit those strips uh, when you leave the garage. So it's got a little electronic reader or something? Yes. Like that. Okay. And that's what records all the data on time in, time out, cost, uh, number of vehicles, et cetera, that we can call for sort of monitoring oversight. Okay. Chief, Chief. Is there still going to be a gate? There will still be a gate because it's going to be an unattended yeah. structure, a system rather, and you need a way so people don't come in the other side. It still has to be a gate. Any other questions? So, so what, what's driving this? And there's been lots of issues with the current system? This system was put in in 2005. Um, we took over parking about a year ago, and right after the system was put in, they started having issues uh, with just, uh, you know, the gate malfunctioning, tickets getting stuck, cards, you know, being ingested, uh, you, know, you know, lots, lots of problems. Police department had to respond, has to respond. We're going there six, seven times a day. Yeah. issues, and we are. So we, we need a system that is technology friendly, friendly, user friendly, and Customer friendly, and this is the system's only seven, eight years old. So um, the only thing I'll other I'll note is that the lower level of the Gothic Street parking or parking deck, uh, we've had that in operation uh, using the green pay to park machines for about two weeks now. Um, again, that's permitted parking from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, it's open after that. There's adequate signage up there now, and uh, the maintenance staff says it's running smooth as can be. So I think that's going to get some use during the winter, that's for sure. Yeah. Covered parking. Um, any other questions? Thank you. Moving along. Um, do, you, uh, do you mind taking these out of order, getting more, putting more updates before we do? Or jump into discussion. Do you mind, Wayne? Okay. Uh, you have to leave anyway. Um, state and Trumbull, do you mind doing just doing getting a quick update on State and Trumbull? Sure, we got the data from the police department. Alex started doing a review of it this past week. Um, it doesn't show a lot of accidents at all mm -hmm. at both uh, Summer and um, Trumbull intersections. Um, it isn't like there's lots of crashes out there. It's just, I was kind of surprised at the data. That <coughs> sure yeah, figure. Yeah. Alex, you remember the numbers offhand? Yeah, I actually have here. It's probably not. On Trumbull, um, I separated as a careless, other, or obstructed view uh, accidents. So for past four years, it was on the Trumbull. The intersection was no accident because of the obstructing view. It was just careless or other, which is like broken uh, tire rod. I can't really do anything about it. It was pretty much uh, two, three accidents per year. And on the summer intersection, for it was one accident per year that was saying that driver did not see other vehicle. And it was pretty much two accidents per year. Not much. So as far as fulfilling a four-way stop criteria, I think that's probably, probably not. Right. right. And now it's looked at four years instead of the full five years because it was going to overlap with Laura's previous work done okay. on this. So we want to make sure that there's a separation between the last time we did the work and this new data chunk that we just took on. Okay. Um, Any other thoughts on that then, Chief? No? No, it's, like I said all along, it's not a series of problems. It's not perceptions, and it's always, always driver error, because you're the stop signs. So, careless, as he put it. Uh, okay, well, we can. Uh, do we 
you have any other thoughts on this up on this uh, street? Other, op uh, other options? Are there are some opportunities that they're talking about. I'm trying to remember the woman's name from Smith College Day School. Uh, talking about establishing a school zone around there that might allow for some traffic calming um, if approved. And because they have multiple interests to their campus, off the state and off the prospect. So it would be a fairly large school zone around there. That might help with the Trumbull Road intersection. As far as summer, I'm not sure how we might address that, except for maybe perhaps a, um, maybe look at a speed table of some sort in the future, if that's an issue. I don't know the, what the drainage is there offhand that would, might cause uh, some design issues out there. No. So just the, remember this campus when we established the school zone on the prospect, they did not want parents to say students drive off even though it happens every day, all day. They're not thinking differently that they would I haven't, that. we haven't hooked up and had the conversations oh, okay. through the telephone tag for about two weeks now. So. Well, they, that, when was that school zone? Years ago. Because they did redo all that down, all that, they took the old laundry building and made that into the school, and they, they have a they have a turnaround now there too. Obviously, yeah. Well, they always had a small one. Yeah, but it was like they pulled in or out. Yeah, but now it's a, they have a full it's a full cul-de-sac where you can go and come so up and down. So changed since my son went to school there. <laughs> uh, I haven't noticed that. A lot of parents are parking the other side of the street across without the crosswalk. But I think it was. We weren't sure about the state of Trumbull signs. That was one of the improvement areas that right. our state had been uh, with better signs, a better pedestrian, uh, stop, you know, the notice of an intersection ahead. So, so our data will be based even before that happened. So it'd be interesting if we look at it again in a year or two, but that it improved even better the number of accidents. All right. Um, I've got some, I've got actually a suggestion for state in trouble to have to come up with new business. Uh, let's look at this traffic calming application, Day Avenue. Um, this is uh, not completed yet, really, because I, we don't really have a, a, a uh, we don't really have any, we don't have any signatures, right? Um, but it, I felt as though I should, when we receive this, we should at least discuss it. Uh, this, I've received a phone call from this woman, um, last month, and uh, I told her that the, the way to proceed is to start with a traffic calming application. I live near Day Avenue, and um, Day Avenue is a, is a fast street, and it's, it's fast. Um, so she proceeded, she started with this, and I think she's uh, still working on, the, on completing the application. And uh, she's not going to, she's certainly not going to appear before us, but maybe we can get a speaker, some, someone from the street to come before us. Uh, the uh, future city council from War 3 lives on Day Avenue, so he probably has an opinion on this too. Uh, but that being said, can I, is there anyone who wants to make any comment about Day Avenue, about this traffic calming application? Well, I'd like to get the report from PVPC and the traffic counts. That will show whether or not there's a speeding issue out there to start, and whether or not there's a classification of vehicle issue, uh, i.e., trucks being used out there. Mm -hmm. And if um, we need to put out counters, I'll have to wait to swing back. Well, I drove by there today. There are counters out there. They're still are. Yeah. I'm surprised. Maybe, they, maybe PVPC forgot them or something. Did you put those out? No. No. Quit. <laughs> you put those out. Let's try over there, Dan. Yeah, we can grab them. Right down to DPW. You might want to. That's just sad. Plus the others. This is this street is between Brit. It's between Bridge Street and, and North Street. It's the it's the quick. It's the first street that leads back into the North Street area. Everyone here is familiar with it. Yes. Um, I think uh, I think if, if there is something to be done on this street, it's it's uh, it's going to take some creative thinking because it's, it's a common customer street. Well, I lived here my whole life, but I still have questions about Day Avenue. Is it parking allowed on both sides or one side? 
what's it? Mm -hmm. I think the, uh, the side going towards Bridge Street, whichever direction that is. That's okay. the south. And it's kind of, this is one that has the flashing crosswalk right at the end. Near it. Yeah. Near it. Yeah, near it. Yeah, this has the, that has the push button. Headlight. Headlight. But it's not sort of a little off. I've never seen anybody jump out of a car and go press the light so they. People, I've heard it. Really hard I've never seen it. I've heard it. I've heard that that, is, that, that does happen. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, has the TPC or DPW set any limits for traffic count as to when traffic count has to be taken into consideration? Is there a guideline? There are some guidelines that we used on Con Street. Um, one of the big ones is the ADTs or the daily traffic demands. Anything over, I think it's. Um, Five or six thousand, they start frowning on vertical uh, deflection devices like raised crosswalks, speed bumps, speed tables, because of the volume associated with it. Under that, we're open to open discussions about a number of different things. The biggest thing we find out with the speed tables or speed bumps is that the thud noise as people go over them, the people that live adjacent to them. Like in Riverside, we did the traffic study in Riverside. There was a one resident is adamant that, it, that they won't have a speed table in front of their house. Yeah. And day ad is everyone's really close, everyone's really pretty much close to the road on day ad, so that's going to be a challenge. Um, but the number the number of cars traveling on a public way can be restricted. Why do you restrict the number of cars that can travel on a public way? If you don't. No, I think what's going on is that if the, if the, if the number of cars is too high, then the you can't traffic know. manual say don't use the speed hump because it, it will back up the traffic too much. And it's all so forth. I think that was the, when I read it. I believe that the the traffic, the you know, number of cars going on a street really shouldn't generate any. How they travel on the street certainly. You know, I grew up on. I didn't grow up. <laughs> <laughs> I lived on North Maple Street for 33 years, and I saw the transition from one stop sign on either side to a blinking light to, you know, and I was not happy when the light went in because of all the cars that backed up in front of our house, but I know it was a very strong safety concern, and it, it did prove to be much, much better, but my initial was, oh my God, I have to listen to it. All the traffic in front of the house, you know, stereos, yada yada. And I just don't see an argument for the number of cars traveling on the street to be something that we or the city should be mm -hmm. addressing. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's volume. It, but it, the only thing you do is slow it down, uh, I guess. But if you have too many cars, you can't slow them down. Um, there's different ways to do it. Like I said, we just don't put a vertical relief out there. That's what we don't do. Engineer talk again. Vertical relief. Like Deflections. <laughs> Keep people from going vertical. Yeah. Airbound. Okay. If, if that's the case, it gets more fun. What, what controls are there? Uh, narrowing of lanes like we've done on North Street. Street diet. Yeah. 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 Thinning things up a little bit. We did that on Cons. We did that on North Street. You can... Um, Put uh, pedestrian cutouts for at crosswalks if you want, if you wanted to, uh, it enhances the pedestrian safety, but it also it narrows that defined lane that people can travel. It also stops people from shooting around to the right of cars. No one's going to want to drive over that in particular. Um, on Riverside, I think they looked at a type of uh, a chicane type system up there at one point. Um, basically, cars coming at each other, and one had to stop while the other one moved through a single lane on Riverside. That was discussed out there. So there's some different things that can be done. Frankly, that's what day app has in some in many respects. I mean, it, with the cars, it's narrow enough that when there's parking on the street, when their when cars parked, mm -hmm. actually, there is sort of a chicane type of scenario. But I don't think we're going to see that, at least I don't think anyway, so you can see day is a high volume street of three, 4,000 cars a day. Boy, I wish, I think we had some data on that. Uh, before, but I know that I know that I use it daily to get to and from work, but I don't speak. That's good. Yeah, I'm caught. 
So we'll uh, we'll work on this for next week. Hopefully, we get better. Have, have the truck problem changed at all since you got the flashes on the exit? That was coming back from me today, and there was a truck that we had back around um, here every other day. There's okay, so you're not noticing any difference. They, they get there. They don't hit the bridge as much, but we still turn them around. Okay. You know, the side, I think I mentioned a couple of people, but the side is that 11 you know, the, the, the height way back by Lawrence Market or just past Lawrence Market flashing all the time. There's so much clutter and science here. You know, I don't think the truck drivers are paying attention. That's They're actually, looking for... Yeah, I'm saying that the one out on, on the interstate exit, if that one had, had its effect. Yeah, it's both directions. Okay. Unfortunately, I don't have the hard data, but I, I can kind of chuckle when I see it. Yep, yep, again, somebody's not paying well, attention. We might have some, we might know, data. we might get some data, not, not about the bridge, but that fewer trucks are taking a left onto Bridge Street in the first place. We might get some because we do have we do have before we do have truck data from before that. We did. That, okay. Good. Um, which actually might include some day apps. So. You might. We might talk to Mass Top. They might actually have a traffic cone on the uh, exit 19 ramp mm -hmm. and see who is in that left lane. You can ask. Well, I know. I just I remember last year that we did have some data. We did collect some data on. Day Avenue and Lincoln, I think. Uh, so we might, there might be some data. I would think still their exit around. redesign, they would have collected all kinds of data. But they don't always do it with the trucks. It is numbers sometimes. Uh, all right, so we'll, hopefully we'll get some stuff from PVPC. And I know, I do know that there's that Laura did have some other stuff, other counts from Day Avenue. So hopefully we can, hopefully you might be able to find some of that. Um, we're almost done here. Amend um, 312.36.0, Department of Media Location and Regulations. I wrote this to allow, by law, uh, the use of um, mayoral authority to temporarily alter or suspend parking fees. Well, uh, there's repairs to replacement. Does everyone get a copy of this in the back? Um, so I, I almost submitted this to uh, the council directly last time, but I wanted a slight couple of word changes, so I decided to bring it before the TPC to save everyone the trouble of referring it. So, um, <coughs> can I have a motion to uh, recommend? Or so, to, to sponsor, probably. Move to sponsor. Second. 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 Uh, any discussion? No discussion. Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Yes. So um, we'll get this onto the uh, docket, and uh, it might have to be continued <coughs> next to the next term, but uh, at least we've sponsored it as well. Uh, the last piece is new business that um, I didn't reasonably anticipate we would need, but. Um, Conversations with Councilor Dwight. Uh, I'm uh, going to bring this before the, com the, the commission. Uh, I'm, I've uh, submitted a request that uh, will be probably be entertained in December by the council to um, allocate roughly fifteen thousand dollars to um, this commission for the sake of traffic calming, uh, specifically the three highest ranked um, applications, which is the Riverside Drive. State Street Chumble Road and uh, High School. Um, I can read it to you. Uh, we, uh, whereas the Transportation Parking Commission submitted on March 19, 2013, a budget of zero dollars, whereas vital traffic calming improvements are needed throughout the city, including the highest ranked incomplete projects of Bay State's Riverside Drive, State Street Chumble Road, and Northampton High School, whereas the city has obtained a windfall of 15000 $112 in parking meter receipts. Now, therefore, be it ordered that $15,112 be appropriated from the parking meter receipts to the Transportation Parking Commission for the purpose of traffic comment. Um, this is what I was submitting to the council, um, and uh, but it would be probably a uh, stronger message if the entire commission would uh, support so, the new business. I need a motion at least to put it on the floor. For purposes of discussion. So, okay. Yeah. 
What is this windfall? Uh, just it's extra money in the parking meter receipts fund, uh, at least from what I can tell. Uh, I guess how you determine that it's extra money? Uh, well, we can strike the word windfall, but it's it's <laughs> it's just money in the parking meter receipts that's reserved for appropriation for any for any municipal purpose. Uh, so I'm suggesting it for traffic. So for the past four, if not five years, I've had a standing request in the Capital Improvements Committee for up to $100,000 each fiscal year for traffic calling, and it's never been funded. Well, maybe we can uh, just ask them to allocate it to our budget instead. The, the, the fact that it's, it's great that you've, you've identified a pot of money, but in four or five years, the city hasn't been able to identify a source that would benefit all the traffic calming applications that we have. That's all. And that amount of money, does it, does it specify what its use is and how it gets divided? Or? No, it, it, the, it says for the purpose of traffic calming. So, so we, we would analysis. We would use the um, we use the ranking system that we have, um, and presumably the ranking system that we have, the current. I, I picked the top three projects that don't have funds associated with them. Uh, we would have to, this commission would have to make a determination based on efficacy and need and, and other interests to uh, allocate the funds after that. So is this the financial order? Yeah, this is the financial order coming from this. It's coming from me, the chair, but um, it would be it would be helpful if the commission wanted to spend the money on traffic calming. So that's why I'm hoping that we can get an endorsement of this today. Um, maybe my recollection is bad, but I thought the new chair of the American Court of Financial Orders so that counts as that. No, it's, it's any, uh, any, anybody, any, no, well, not anybody. <laughs> it's any city office, city agency, basically. I've got some reservations that I choose does I, I don't think we can bring a financial order forward. No. Um, we can bring a recommendation or a request. Yeah, the um, my understanding of the I've read the rules. Um, my understanding is that uh, we're city agency or committee. And uh, that the chair can bring the chair can bring the uh, order forward. I can read the I can read the law if you want. I can have it actually. Um, but uh, the president, because it's um, something that typically doesn't happen, the president of the council suggested that the TPC discuss it, like we're doing. Uh, and if, if the TPC wanted to spend the funds on traffic calming to enforce it, the TPC doesn't have to. Um, I've got it 44, chapter 44A. After the passage of an annual budget, no additional appropriation for or transfer of money to any board, agency, committee, or department shall be made by the city council until the chairman, which would be me, agent or head of such board, agency, or committee, or department seeking the appropriation or transfer shall appear before the city council, explain the necessity for additional appropriation or transfer. This section shall apply to all boards, agencies, and committees, and the departments of this city, including the board of public works and school committee. So it's legal, um, but uh, it's legal for me to do it. I think it, it would be nice if the commission endorsed it, but the commission doesn't have to. It looks like, I mean, in the same thing, if, if I want to move forward, the reallocation of funds from a revenue source that isn't already built into my budget, I'd either amend my budget to reutilize that money within the budget, or I would go through the mayor and the finance director for change in how that revenue is dispersed. So I'm not, I'm just trying to figure out maybe there's another way to do it, but you've obviously done the research and I haven't had the opportunity to, to look at it. But you're not asking the parking division to the budget by 15,000. No. Because their budget's both not expected revenues, as does this the entire city budget by the finance director. Mm -hmm. So this $15 is just $15 away from that. From the parking meter. It's estimated <clears throat> revenues. But that's right. But the revenues are always estimated when it comes to parking. No, sorry, I just say what you're saying. I would think instead of capital improvement money, you can't use for what you're proposing. 
I would think in, in the future then, we work through a budget process that the parking meter receipts have $15,000 set aside of all the cities. Yeah, I think that, that would be nice. <laughs> I think that would be the path I'd be more comfortable talking going forward with them. Than, than not endorsing this. Yeah, uh, just a financial order. Our budget process is going to start probably in January, yeah. if not February, the latest. And one of the three things you mentioned already, we have data that kind of contradicts that is from the intersection. So. Oh, the State Street. Yeah, I'm just saying. Oh, okay. Well, it, it does. It is ranked high on the list. I mean, we wouldn't have to. TPC wouldn't have to allocate it towards that. Towards that one. Um, well, I'd be more comfortable, probably even more than fifteen thousand, in the future budget set aside, not just capital improvements, but using some revenue and parking to be set aside for the you know use for priority projects by this committee. Put that in the queue for the future instead of just my my opinion. I understand. Uh, I see this as it's just tip, the tip of it. You know, these some of these projects have been languishing for mm -hmm. a, a long time. Yeah, you know, a long time. And a little bit of money can put a speed bump in or something like that, or help with some striping and, and so on and so forth. So this this is my attempt to try to. I won't be around to spend this money, so it's my attempt to try to at least get the get a little bit of cash into the system. It can be then used for small, small improvements. Um, uh, a couple of thoughts. One is, uh, I've described the work of this committee as being terribly frustrating because we have no way to fix most of the problems. So, people, you know, we've encouraged the citizens to organize and get signatures and come in, and we do studies. And to the project, we have known we really don't have the money to fix it. Um, Fifteen thousand doesn't get you anything. I mean, I, Ned's talking about 100,000 that he's, he, he's hoping to do just the same thing, one or two projects with that, maybe. Um, and I, I don't think it's newfound money. It's money in the budget. You're just interested in reappropriating it because that parking money has been going into the city budget. So it's been, you know, it, it's not new money in any way. Um. It's, you it's, think maybe it's, it is based on more. raising the rates? Yeah, it's, it's new money. Uh, okay, well that, I think, you know, I'm not sure about the mechanism. I'm just, I, I would be remiss if I didn't say it, it's really a, a problematic situation. We've encouraged people to come in. We pretended that we were going to study it and do fixes. And I don't mean pretend, we put real effort into it. But unless we had planning board traffic mitigation money, we haven't done anything. Um, so I don't know what it would take to get some, you know, I, I, don't, I know you're competing with all the other capital improvement projects, but maybe getting some publicity behind that and how important that piece of money is. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think, I think when you just say, well, we want to improve traffic, you know, that maybe doesn't get it. But if they realized what this whole nuts and bolts process had been, but that's where I'd love to see it come through because I think you are at the smallest of the numbers at 100,000. And you know, it took 50 something to restrike South Street. So, you just doesn't, 15 won't get you much. A couple of speed bumps. I mean, I, I agree with that at the speed bump level. Yeah, you can, like, put, you can put a traffic, little traffic island in or something like I that. I South Street, I think, was closer to $90,000 to get done. Wow. Yeah. Oh, no. Any other comments? So, um, so this is for uh, um, endorsement. That's what it is for endorsement. Do you ready to vote? Would this conversation encourage you to go another way with that? Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm not. Like I said, I'm not going to be around very long for this. Uh, but it, it, this will certainly have an effect on the counselors. They the, they they won't allocate the funds if the TPC doesn't want the money. So, you know, so then it, it, I mean, they might, but they probably won't. So, but they probably they probably won't anyway because it's coming from me. So you don't have to worry too much. Well, but I don't want to be a committee that doesn't want. I mean, that is my frustration. We have no funds, but I don't want to rob Peter to pay Paul, which is kind of what it, this feels like. Except, it, it is important to me that you're defining the new income of the parking system. If I'm understanding that. Yes. Yeah. Fifteen thousand one hundred twelve dollars. 
that's new how I mean. Uh, it's, it's, it was during that, was that week where all the rates skyrocketed. Normally we collect 5000 or something. But well, the $4 fee, yeah. So it's, it's, it's really, really cover the weeks of lost revenue. If it's 5000 a week and we lost revenue for two weeks, doesn't that add up to 15000 Well, we have at least five extra from the fees and stuff. I mean, there's, there's ex it's found money. I mean, we uh, can haggle about the number, but it is, it is, it is more than anticipated. Yeah. Uh, I already expressed my opinion. I'm kind of uncomfortable. Okay, so this is for endorse, this is for just endorsement. All those in favor, say aye. aye. Well, let's count this up. You're actually not allowed to vote, sorry. <laughs> if I wasn't One. here, you could. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. All those opposed? Three. Okay, so it's endorsed, but narrowly. I'll reflect that when I when I propose it, when I present it to the council. Uh, any other <coughs> business? Just for safety, education program went well. We got all the posters in the schools, the pamphlets handed out, collector tickets, been very active. We just got a fully wide portion of grant um, for the Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's holidays. So there'll be multiple four hour patrols out uh, doing that. So we continue to fare well with uh, the Governor's Highway Safety Bureau uh, and getting these grants. So it uh, helps us to be more active out there. Do, do you want a regular up? Like spot on the agenda for upda upgrade updates from. No. Okay. <laughs> uh, do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All right. All those in favor. All right. All right. All right. All right.